<sighs> Hello! Hi! I'm Selkie. Um, welcome to another video. I say as if I haven't made literally just one and then an animation project I did years ago. Uh, but yeah. I am going to show you how I made this little guy. Um, it is a person, and I don't think I'm gonna end up sewing the back. Like, I'm not gonna pin this down and sew it quite yet because I might keep it on the hoop um, and end up selling it depending on what happens. But this is the biggest beading project I've ever done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, and yeah, so let's get into it. My wrist hurts so bad. I originally started this mermaid with some satin stitches in the arms. One arm is kind of tucked behind the body and then some little tiny single stitches, seed stitches, whatever you want to call them, uh, for the head and the torso. I ended up adding little like teeny tiny itty bitty stitches and french knots on the body to kind of give it ever so slightly the color of like scales too but that's not for a while still i did that as like one of the last touches to kind of help fill in the tail and give it a little more texture i did a lot of french knots in various colors on the tail so that also kind of mimicked like maybe places where scales were gone or maybe where they weren't as like lustrous or maybe they were barnacles something like that whatever you want but just to give it a little more exciting texture than just the beads. But when I did start beading, the annoying thing about that is that I... <laughs> I don't have a beading needle. Because beading needles are typically used for, if I'm remembering correctly, like stringing beads onto like a string if you're making a necklace. Not a string, but you know what I mean. And that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm sewing into embroidery, so I'm using a sewing needle. But the sewing needle is a little too thick for some of the beads. So I have to try the needle through the bead, and if it doesn't fit, I have to put the bead somewhere that I remember that it's not gonna fit, and then keep doing the process over and over and over again until I find one that fits, and then start over, you know, like, over and over again. <sighs> but then the only downside of that is when I have to close the little, like, Altoid tin I have all of this in so I can take it with me somewhere, I have to kind of put all the beads back together, so then I kind of lose what beads fit and what beads didn't because I'm dumb. I don't have an explanation. Drop for whatever I end up doing with it. Thanks. As you can kind of see, I kind of rotated excuse me, between my desk and my bed, which neither one is incredibly comfortable, but it's better than sitting in my car and doing it, which I did a little bit, but that footage, you could, I didn't really have anywhere to put my phone, so it kind of just looks like it's looking at my leg the entire time, and you can't really see what I'm doing, so I cut that out. Um, but yeah, my desk is low enough to the ground that sitting on a normal chair is really weird because then I have to hunch over more and my scoliosis does not agree with that so <laughs> I'm probably gonna get risers to put under this desk because my dad made it out of plywood um, 
not plywood, what is it called? Pallet wood. He made that, and it's attached to like my bed as part of my bed frame. So like, my desk is against the wall, and my bed is facing the outer window. Does that make any sense? <laughs> my bed is facing forward, and I'm sitting behind it on the desk that's behind it, where my chair is against the wall. So. I don't know, does that make any sense? Do you hear the Blue Jays fighting? No? Just my stomach grumbling a little bit? Alright. Oh, I need to turn this lamp off before it sets something on fire. exciting happening for me lately. <laughs> like all three of my subscribers care about my life. Um, but you know, I just started a new job in before and after school, like care for an elementary school and it's fine. It's, it sucks to have to wake up really early in the morning, have like a four or five time span between, four or five hour time span between my two shifts that I can't really go home because it's too far away. I mean, I can, but like by the time I get there, it's like, uh. So I kind of just hunker <laughs> down at the library, and then I go back for my second shift of the day, and then I come home in time for like dinner and stuff. So you know, it's not the worst. It pays me okay, but it was the job that I could get at the time. And now that I'm looking at other things and have maybe other opportunities that are closer, pay more, or at least give me more hours and allow me to not have to drive so far, um, I might be switching it up, but I don't know. Most of the kids are great, and I really like my coworkers, especially the one who's, um, with me more often every, every morning and afternoon for, like, most of the week. Um, but I am, like, the location lead, and so I feel bad if they don't have a location lead anymore. I don't know, man. I kind of did, oh, what's it called? It ends up looking like a braid when I stitch it through. I don't remember what it's called. A chain stitch, maybe? I think that's wrong. But it's kind of where, like, you stitch it and then you split it in half and, like, put the needle up back through it and then stitch again. So it ends up kind of looking like a braid, and that's what I did for the hair. Um, I used a variety of different colors because I didn't want to use green, even though that probably would make more sense for, like, hair that looks like kelp for camouflage, you know? But... Whatever. It needed a little spice of color that wasn't, like, <laughs> um, green, so the little 
You'll see later that I put like a stripe of like a seafoam green that looks like a little more bluish than the rest of the greens on the tail and I didn't want it to look out of place. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right here right now. Okay, one thing you didn't see is I finished the tail with a couple different colors and then I gave her a face. I ended up cutting out the smile of the face because it looked weird and I couldn't tell why and then I called my partner and I was like, hey, something about this is wrong, what is it? And they're like, it's the mouth. I was like, oh, you're right. And yeah, so I'm finishing editing this right now before I do the voiceover and then publish it, but I figured I might as well do the wrap up right now. I didn't do a wrap up my first video, but that seems to be a thing that people do, so. I don't know. Anyway, I ended up, as I showed, taking off the little mouth part, and that made it look a lot better. Um, and yeah, I am going to try to not let myself do any embroidery for the next couple of days to kind of give my poor wrist a break. Um, yeah, I can feel that it's like ever so slightly swollen. I need to get like compression gloves, but I haven't gotten around to that. Um, so for now, me and Froggy, beep, 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 beep. we're going to say goodbye. Thank you for, I guess, watching and checking it out. And all the audio credits are in the description. I did half of this music myself on Soundtrap, so that's partially why this took me like 12 hours to do. I'm very tired. Anyway, hope you enjoyed.